Now this one has the Intel N97 CPU inside. In today's video, we're gonna be checking this one out. Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble. Today's mini PC came to us again from GMK Tech. No money was exchanged, and this mini PC was sent to us in purpose of video review. This one is the G5, which is their latest mini PC in the budget range. Let's open her up. So inside the box, we got the manual, a card, a 12 volt 3 amp power adapter, uses USB-C, and finally this little cutie here. Pikachu. This mini PC has the Intel N97 processor. It's in the same group of CPUs as the N95 and N100, so we should have a good experience in Windows. We're given 12 gigabytes of memory, which should help in tools, but unfortunately, we only have HDMI 2.0, which will limit our video output to 4K at 60 Hz. One more thing to note is that this mini uses the older Bluetooth 4.2 and Wi-Fi 5, which may be a deal breaker. You can get this from Amazon for this amount of money, or you can get them directly from their website. We'll leave your links in the video description down below, and if we have a coupon code, we'll leave you that too. So let's take a closer look. So this one's the teal, and it's got stripes on it. I mean, it's quite minimalistic, but we're not a big fan of its looks. On the front, we have a nice green power button. And there's two USB 3.2 ports. Moving to the right side, we have a micro SD card slot. And Kensington. Kensington? Yes, Kensington. On the back, we've got the USB-C for power, a 3.5mm headphone jack, and two HDMI 2.0 ports, which are apparently good for 4K at 60 Hz. There's a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN port and another USB 3.2. Hello, nothing. Hey, it's me, John Luke. Let's have a look underneath. We have the one sticker in the middle and four very small rubber feet in each corner. They don't really raise the computer much, so it won't aid in cooling, but it may protect the surface of a monitor if you use the vase mount. Talking of which, we didn't actually get a vase mount included, but this is where they'd go if you had one. One more thing we should mention is that there's a fan inside here, and on three sides of the case, we have holes so air can get in. Or out. Time for the size comparison. The G5 is smaller than the B-Link S12. It's around a quarter of the size of the Chewy Logbox X 2023. Here's the Meal PC G02 Pro. And the GMG Tech G3. Snack. And a Nintendo Game Boy. Can you guess the game? Mm -hmm. My favorite smiley spoon. A PlayStation 4 controller. And a Roy Bush tea bag. The GMK Tech G5 is around one Roy Bosch tea bag big. Yeah. Then after connecting it to a monitor, speakers, mouse and keyboard, we can get cracking. On a first boot, we're greeted to the Windows setup screen. It's very straightforward, we just need to tell it what language to use, keyboard settings, give it a username, and we can uncheck all these options to turn off Skynet. How are you, gentlemen? All your base are belong to us. You are on your way to destruction. But we're not, because we turned you off. We won't ask for Wi-Fi settings in the setup, and we can get straight into Windows. We ran both Avast and Malwarebytes, and they reported the system was clean of any virus or malware. And Windows updated with no problem, as did our drivers. Yeah. The experience in Windows is fairly good and should be enough for the regular user. We can use Office with no problems at all and it'd be ideal for light workloads. For example, creating artwork in 2D packages like Krita is definitely possible, but we wouldn't recommend it for any 3D art or video production. But of course, there are many packages for productivity now that reside on the internet. And any web browser with multiple tabs is a bit of a memory hog, so the 12 gigabytes of LPDDR5 is definitely welcome. If we move towards Amazon and Amazon Prime, video streaming all works with the HD button lit. Here's Netflix. And YouTube in full 4K. Let's hop over to the benchmarks. And wow, the GPU scores blow the N100 out of the water, which is expected as the clock speeds are significantly higher. But what we didn't expect are the low single core scores and this may be due to power or thermal throttling during the benchmark. Storage speeds are quite poor, and it's what to expect for an M2 SSD. It's a bit of a shame they didn't choose NVMe for this system. Here's some Cinnabon. And for our Wi-Fi strength, we're at about 80%, which is a decent score. It's just a shame we're using Wi-Fi 5 and not one of the newer standards. We could easily connect our Bluetooth controller 
but let's get to the games. We'll start off with the easier 2D titles. First, Cuphead. 1080p, full speed. Among Us also runs with no issues. Pac-Man CE2. In Dave the Diver, 1080p certainly does struggle. And for full 60fps, we need to use 720p. We love Katamari Reroll. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Even though it's not running at full 60 FPS, it's still very playable. Fallout 4. And moving on to some esports titles, here's Fortnite at medium settings. In Rocket League, we get 60 FPS at 1080p performance settings. And here's Counter Strike 2. As we get in between 35 and 45 FPS, it's definitely not ideal. X. So here's the BIOS, and there are many options to change. And rather than dig to find the TDP settings, we can easily go to the power options at the top and switch between these three choices. Going forward, we will need to change this to 15 watts, as we had issues with not enough power being supplied to our USB drive in Badassera. Once we loaded it up, we can easily find and connect to our Wi-Fi network. We could easily pair up our Bluetooth controller, and that also worked without issue. And now this computer is a bit of an emulation beast. It can handle Amstrad, C64, Atari ST, Commodore Amiga, MS-DOS, and by extension, the Xbox. This can also handle multiple arcade titles, such as Killer Instinct 2 on MAME, arcade version of Tekken 3, Capcom vs SNK2 on Naomi. And Sega Model 3. Running at 3 times resolution, here's got a War Chains of Olympus on the PSP. And a bit of PlayStation 2. There's some dips here and there in God of War 2, but who cares? It sucks. It's F0 GX on the GameCube, double resolution, running at full speed. Nintendo Wii, with Rhythm Heaven Fever, and Mario Kart Black. Wii U. For the most part, once the shaders are compiled, we do get a full 60 FPS, but that only applies to the more easier to run games. As Mario Kart 8 turns into a bit of a slideshow.
Let's see what's inside. To open this up, there are four small posi screws. And to remove the bottom is pretty difficult. So what we did was get a piece of sellotape, stick it to the bottom, and then pull down. We have easy access to the 2242 SSD, and this one is by Hiksemi. They're not a well-known brand, but they have started appearing on the Japanese Amazon site with good reviews. From experience, we know that Amazon reviews can't be trusted. We have nothing else to go off, except our low disk mark scores. So it turns out the slot in the center is capable of doing NVMe. And we could also update our Wi-Fi chip if needed. We tried to get in further, but yeah, we'll probably break something. Using HDMI, we could use ultra-wide QHD. We were offered 99.9Hz, .9 but the maximum we could get was 60. But if we lowered resolution to 1080p, we can get 120Hz. Temperatures kept fairly low, around 55 degrees at idle. And for the size of the computer, it stayed surprisingly quiet. And it pulls this from the wall. Under load, it stayed at 85 degrees Celsius, and it remains still fairly quiet. And it's using 24 watts. We then raised the power limit to 15 watts in the BIOS, and there wasn't really much change in FPS or temperatures. But the most confusing thing is less noise. At just under 25 from the wall. HW Info reported thermal throttling, which is triggered at 85 degrees in order to protect the CPU. As this will have a tiny heatsink, the temperatures will be more erratic than a larger size computer. We also know that the N97 is capable of more. Last year, we put four budget CPUs head to head. We're not quite sure what the N95 was doing back then, but alcohol was probably involved. We then ran the same benchmark tests with the N97. And the results? N97, top of the pack. Meow. Let's get to the pros and the cons. The GMK Tech G5 is a great little mini PC for the student or family. It's tiny, quiet, performance in Windows doesn't feel sluggish, and it's great for video streaming and emulation. Unfortunately, if you want it for 3D gaming, you need to look elsewhere. Due to throttling, it's not running on all cylinders, and it uses older standards such as Wi-Fi 5, M2 SATA, and HDMI 2.0. It kind of looks like they tried a little too hard in keeping the prices low, as there's no HDMI cable or VESA mount bracket. At the current price of around $155 on Amazon, the G5 sits well in the mini PC arena. And this mini PC showed us that the Intel N97 is the 2024 king of budget CPUs. And here's just a little more... Tony Hawk. This has been me Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next video. These two exist, so why not check one out? If you need something to hit, I can lend you Wesley.